Xenoblade Cross story is deeper than you thought. Many keep saying that Cross focuses more on exploration than in story, and although true, ends up dismissing what could have been an amazing story. Cross is more than the plot we saw in the game, which was an adaptation of a fraction of the story written by Takahashi. Cross was supposed to be part of a much larger saga. This was merely the first chapter, which introduced many plot points for the sequels, as if Sino Saga only released the first game. And believe me, the ganglion threat we fought is microscopic compared to the bigger picture. Doubts? Well, we'll include some very interesting quotes from interviews, special thanks to LXJK who compiled this big archive. Give it a read if you're interested. The cliffhanger in which the game ended is also just one of the many mysteries we'll talk about today. Wait, you are telling me Sinoblade Cross has a story? As I just said, many plot points were introduced. Which ones? Some people could ask, as a lot of time has passed and many of these plot points were in affinity quests, key dialogue or the unidentified document section. That is the focus of this video. I'll briefly mention them in hopes of catching your attention first. These plot threads that could be developed in a sequel are The Black Knight and Lao, The Ghosts and Elma's Origins, along with the Lone Hero, Elle's Devil Original Form, AI and the J Bodies, More Arcs and Human Survivors Beyond the White Whale, The Clue System, Celica and Nail Nile, The Ova. The Great One, Luxars and the Ganglion's Origins, the Sumerian Whereabouts, Black Tar, and finally, something about this planet. So, on with the video. The Black Knight, one of the most enigmatic characters, appears in the post credit scene, reaching to a resurrected Lao Mimison body in the shore. The secret files state that we saw his legs in the game, of course being the one in that post credit scene. However, the rest of the armor design is different. In the game we never saw his armor, nor directly, so they just reused assets of a generic blade armor. His real design is right here. Even so, he resembles Gears Geisel Ministry and Saga's Testaments. Perhaps an early concept for Mobius, but Black Light Saga's Voyager? Or others were supposed to have colors? Why would he approach Lao? To greet him? To recruit him? Would Lao become a member of said organization? Like a consul or a testament? We don't know much, but he has some blue cores in his armors, wields an advanced katana with a red glow and uses a hood. His mech is said to have a Rothian katana with a purple glow, and fangs from multiple space creatures as trophies. Just who is he? Does he seek power? The Ghosts, the other alien army present in Earth's destruction. Also, the ones that follow the White Whale attacked it and forced them to land on Mira. We've only seen their scales in the intro of the game, a mix of metal and purple flesh, with some orange-purple cores in different places. Their ships have halos. The main ship, the biggest, is half of a sphere with a metallic frame underneath all of that purple flesh a circular rotating pattern like Origins. They have dark matter engines and reactors at their disposal. They blew Earth with those. Both Ghosts and Ares share elements like charcoal composition, cores, purple flesh, and the secret files say they are related. 
the cannon of the Ares resembles the main ship, and the art book censors many keywords in their descriptions with black lines, as if they are hiding something, like names. Now, most importantly, why were they there? The Sumerian ship with the ganglion went to Earth after finding a copper-like plate in space with carvings about the humans, like the golden disks the NASA sent to space in real life years ago. The ganglion only heard of humans and the failsafe from stories before. Now they knew they were real. But what about the ghosts? Well, mixed with the topic of Elma, she went to Earth to warn them about the threat. But Elma didn't know about the Sumerians until the Manon informed them. Nor the ganglion, as she met them in Mira and tried to negotiate first. Only comparing their scales with the ones on Earth after the mission. So, Elma came to Earth to warn humanity about the ghost threat. Additionally, as Elma brought scale technology like the Ares to Earth, which is stated to be like the ghosts, has a greenish or grey skin and pointy ears, plus some flesh and metallic shards in her forehead that resemble the ones in the ghost ship, it would be wise to think that Elma comes from that side. She is from the ghosts. Additionally, the eyes of Mimisomes, which is technology Elma brought, looks like the center of the ghost ship. Going to the Vita, it started to leak black fog, which possessed the creatures nearby the impact crater. Elma also recognizes the Vita as technology or handiwork of them. It's theirs, but not the Samarians nor the Ganglion, some unmentioned unnamed entity, probably the ghosts, the devil, else true form. Else name is El Sirufe, anagram of Lucifer, a curious being from Mira, with a thirst for knowledge, but that knows things we don't. He informed us of the Delethia's name and purpose, and he's the only one in Mira who had to learn the human language, thanks to some lifehold archives. Remember, every race in Mira, Manon, Ganglion, humans, etc., understands each other without speaking the same language. They perceive the others as speaking their common language. One of the mysteries of the planet. Mind translation. But L doesn't need that, or doesn't use it. L always refers to himself as we. Could be one of his common mistakes, or could be that he is actually many beings in one or a collective. L has a dark secret. The unidentified material give us some details and concept of L's original form, an alien devil-like entity, with energy wings, big horns, talons everywhere, and a very mean face. He is native from Mira. The J bodies. In the old's affinity quest, we search for the remains of an old friend of his. We only find pieces, but had a good time with our friend. Then, the cutscene show us Eleonora, who was close to Yelf and his growth as a Blade member. She is talking to someone about how he was developed, about implant memories, his personality stabilizing thanks to the aid of a third party, which is us, wondering if they could use this master copy as the preset for massive production of J-Bodies, which are in production. She receives order to proceed with phase 2 of the project and watches the city from above like an evil person would do. Implanted memories and personality? Mass production? Both Jill and Cross have trouble with their past memories. Is Cross a J body too? The protagonist and lone hero. 
missing. The protagonist was said to be in his late 20s. No name decided yet, but with a personality. We know there was an original version of the story and even a protagonist before Nintendo pushed the online functions, which resulted in many changes and scrapped content. His design shows that he is originally a Sino, like Elma, looking human thanks to the mimeosomes, like Elma. He was raised on Earth. Nagi saw him grow. Elma said he liked classic cars. Maybe Elma and him arrived on Earth as kids, like child refugees? Elma also has memories of growing up on Earth, and if they arrived together, maybe they traveled through the Ares? They piloted it together mentioned in many conversations, like Doug saying that it was a tandem scale, which means model for two people. And if she wasn't weird, then interrupted. Interestingly, Elma says she was there in the Ares scale fighting when the ghost followed the white whale. But some time passed and Elma describes her landing in Mira in a red or pinkish scale something happened in between. The original Ares was seemingly lost. We didn't see what happened to it. Maybe they recovered it to make the Brock Ares? Maybe the lone hero sacrificed himself and ejected Elma in a skate pod or something? Elma is always sad or upset when they bring up the lone hero. Other ships and Neo Tokyo the secret files refers to the Air Force One, the presidential ship, but states that it hasn't been seen in New LA, asking where it could be. We know there is art for the president's daughter as well. In some side quests, we learn that other ships have tried to establish contact. Neo Tokyo is not scrap content replaced by New LA, as many still spread. They wanted NLA to be New York at first. Neo Tokyo is not featured in New LA concept art, but rather in the unidentified material, which elaborates in cut, yet canon content. We can see in the Mira Planet image another city to the right. Neo Tokyo also has a Sakuraba residency, a Japanese house with a mix of modern and traditional, with a big garden like Jin's house from Sino Saga. The OVA is some sort of sacred virus that exists within each orphan, which acts as some sort of consciousness, fate or instinct, guiding them in their lives. However, it managed to link with other wild creatures in Mira. The OVA itself is said to have been one entity in the past, in a world of an endless sea, from which the Telethia came from. The Telethia, that which calls the impure, despises the OVA. So, the OVA was something from the world of Bionis, and considered impure? Nothing from the original Xenoblade comes to my mind something sacred that was one entity. It cannot be Sansa divided into pieces, as Telethias came from him. He can't be the impure. But from Future Connected, we know they despise the Fog Beasts and the Fog King. The fog from the rift spreads and controls many creatures. The Telethia opposes it. The fog appeared in the Bionis world at first. So, now we have two types of fog beasts in X. The Ova from the Bionis world, which spreads and controls beans, and the Tainted from the black fog leaking from the Vita, which is ghost technology. The Great One. The Great One is a mystery. This powerful force Loxar venerates. What we know is that the Vita, which means life, 
although from ghost technology was supposed to be a vessel, only the great one can use it to its full potential. Luxor was able to use around 30% of its capabilities, because the blood of the great one ran through his veins, which would mean the great one had a physical organic form in the past. Or Luxor was created from a fragment of it, like the Gazo Ministry from Deus in Sinogears. Could the Great One be linked to the Ova, like possessing a mortal ganglion in the past, hence Luxor's DNA? And as the Vita was supposed to be his vessel, it may be an artificial replica of its original form, as the Ova was a singular entity in the past. Ganglion and Luxor's DNA Speaking of Luxor and the Ganglion, both English and Japanese versions have their names related to flesh. In Japanese it's growth and in English Ganglion, like the Ganglion. Just to clarify, there are two Ganglion terms. The Ganglion as a species, like Luxor and his assistant, and the crime organization the alliance of various slave races threatened by the failsafe, enslaved by the ganglion themselves, or both, like the Sarubogan, they are weak to human DNA, they were artificially created from something else, hence the name. And Luxar has the blood of the Great One, so were they created from flesh or samples of their creators? Is the Great One a Cimmerian? Or was it created by the Cimmerians? Luxor also states that humans may be linked to the Vita due to their birthright and be able to sense it, or rather, sense the lack of a vital component. And speaking of the Cimmerians, the Cimmerians' whereabouts. The Manon state that the Cimmerian Federation only rules about 6 million light years. The ganglion is but a mere crime syndicate inside it. Luxor's big ship, the ganglion's main base of operation, was just one more of the bunch in the opening scene of the game, where we can see an entire fleet of those, along with a very, very big main ship. The secret files say that this is the Rose Garden, with entire cities inside it, and that it's currently observing Mira while in orbit. Are the Sumerians still present in this time period? Do they live here? Or did they migrate to another timeline or dimension just as they arrived at the beginning of this universe? Or maybe could the data of the life hold be stored in the Rose Garden? The Clue System The Cluorian, which is Celica's race, designed the Nail Nile Albus and Ferbus scales, as well as the Triumph Barrier that Elma used in the life hold. In the unidentified material, speaks of a Cluorian woman of the same name, Nail Nile seen in a flying white castle or spaceship above Neo Tokyo apparently, it's not new LA at least, and this concept uses photo bashing, which means it's a drawing on top of a screenshot of the game, or development of the game. But these roads are not from the residential district. This house looks like the Sakuraba house seen earlier. Ok, about these skulls, with the same name, Nail Nile Albus and Ferbus, white and black. They are quite weird, not just in design, but they seem to be able to manipulate time in Mira, both in canon descriptions and in battle, as they can ultra accelerate the day and night cycle, making you lose TP during the encounter and it is stated that the time period and location of the original data of their encounter is unknown. Black Tar On a sea of dark matter, 
Every Minute Matters. This catchy song is heard in the game, half of it during the ground battles and the other in the scale battles. The theme speaks of this black tar as something that came unexpected, different from the ghosts, and is taking over, possessing friends, those that are being consumed by it hear voices, it follows you wherever you go, a mark of death, it says something about show me in the fog, how many times you gotta kill your friends, people are dripping black tar. It's taken a ship down so far. Black tar covers most eyes. Black tar covers most eyes. What the hell was that? We never see black tar in the game as described. I was going to talk about a black tar theory in a later video of the long forgotten roadmap, but I can just briefly mention it here. But keep in mind, it is just a theory. Ok, in Perfect Works Video Express, did we create the black tar? My idea here was that the closest thing we saw to the black tar origins were that the lifehold security system produced, the chimeras, which seemed to be made out of it. So the black tar would be a concentrated substance made of all of Earth's lifeform DNA similar to the Gul'dos concept from Xenoblade 2. As seen here, it is produced for the Chimera and Chimera Lao, which had a white and black hat. We know that some Chimeras escaped the lifehold, like Lugalbanda, the unique enemy, not the translator, although there is a white Chimera, also very important. Luxor disintegrated in humans' DNA, fusing with Lao's body and the Chimera forming from them. But something else fell there, mixing with that substance, the Vita, made of unknown materials, dark matter, and supposedly the vessel for the Great One. Maybe a combination of the Vita and this lifehold security system Chimeras gave birth to a new independent entity the Black Tar, which is programmed to defend the core. We saw how the system failed, targeting everything but the Chimeras and Life Vault itself as hostile. It could also be the influence of the ghost technology, the Vita, fusing with it, as Elma sends the ghost of the pilot inside it. Or the Great One could use the Black Tar as a vessel? Just theories. something about this planet. Finally, the issue that most people that have heard about Xenoblade Cross know. The game ends with a cliffhanger. Mira is a mysterious place with unique phenomena. First, in the ending itself, the servers where everyone from the White Whale, genetics and memories were stored. Those servers from the Lifehold were destroyed ever since they landed on Mira. So, where is everyone's data stored? That I cannot answer yet. All we have are theories. Easily, one of the main concerns New LA will have in the next game. Along with that, we have the mentioned translating system the planet has. From the art book and some Xenos dialogue, we know that Mira is an artificial planet, supposedly the homeland of the Sumerians. This planet exists in its own space-time phenomena. You can't escape. The planet sucks you in, and most importantly, it is made out of different worlds fused together. Reinterpretation in the Blade games. Don't freak out, as stated in my previous video about Xenoblade 4. If we consider both Xenosaga and Xenoblade Cross as source material but not canon, we can deduce some things. First of all, the idea of this option is that Xenoblade Cross content, not just the game but the big story Takahashi wrote, 
was partially adapted into Xenoblade 2 and 3, and maybe some in the next saga. Which concepts from Cross were adapted? In Xenoblade 2, we have the Goldos, for example, similar to the Chimeras in concept, the Blade system being slaves of humans like Ganglions with Samar, Land of Moritha and the Beanstalk, presumably from what we can see in the planet image. In Xenoblade 3, we have, of course, Mira sharing the same concept of an artificial world made of a fusion of different worlds with Ionius. The Urbors and Ares, the fusion of two pilots, the, the pseudo origin arc, which I guess was just be named Merkava, like in Gears and Saga. Because Sinoli Cross was more blunt with the biblical references, while Blade has been using new terms and names that, although represent the same, do not depend on said scriptures creating its own mythos. We also have the black fog, the continents, the mimeosomes or fake bodies of both the fake prince and the husk from soldiers, Mobius presumably with the black knight, based on the castle and testaments of course, El, the devil native to Mira, like said is to Ionios, and now the earth colonization project, Project Exodus. The leftover concepts that haven't been seen in the main Blade story are said Exodus project ships arriving at the planet, the mechanization of said Euroboros forms, the return of the devil in a friendly form like El Sirufe. Maybe Seth would go as Zarathustra in this new world? Origin in space. Saviorites aside from Sinulate 2 and 3 mentions, actually see them, a J-body-like art, a reinterpretation of Cosmos just like Elma was, two entities reaching the planet to help people, the Great One. As stated, I don't think it's an AI, it seems to have been mortal or in possession of flesh in the past. I'm not sure if we'll see the conduit ever again but the Great One could be linked to it, or interact with it? We don't know where the Conduit went after Cloud's death. Maybe it appeared before another civilization helping them evolve. Ok, that's it, too much speculation, we got to stop. I hope I finished this on time. Liar! Or I can blame the time zone. Can you stop making shit up? But on February the 8th, this channel will be a year old. Started with a Xenoblade Cross video, so this is like an anniversary video. We reached 780 subscribers, although while I was giving the final touches to this script, I lost one. So 779 it is. Wait, 783 now. The Cadencia model is done. I want to finish Fornis quickly for scale comparison purposes, but you won't have to wait too long for the next video. I'll be there for the much anticipated art and lore book that I and many others have wished for. Can't wait to see official explanations, beautiful landscapes and some possible confirmed theories? I will also be there whenever a Metroid Prime 4 or 2 announcement is made although the Metroid video didn't receive much views, but anyways. Should I make a video in case a Nintendo Direct happens? I know that kind of things bring a lot of views, but I don't know what they could announce at this point. Thank you so much! Thank you so much for your support in my first year! I do not know what the future holds. Can't wait to see all the upcoming games, and how this channel evolves. Anyways. That would be for today, have a good one.